Well, for anyone who was at Swindon yesterday, it could have been worse. It could have been like this. But at least Jen's bike's getting a wash. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, back in the shed after, um, oh, put it up there. after a wonderful, uh, a wonderful meet down in Swindon. It was great to see everyone again. Um, it was, uh, yeah, despite the uh, weather forecast, it, was, it wasn't too bad. A little bit windy, but um, no, it was really good and really looking forward to the ace. Um, no, just brilliant to see everyone and hang out again. We really enjoyed it. Um, on the way back, it was reasonably, not, not a massive journey, but a reasonably <laughs> big journey for us. It was, I think we did, I think we did about 200 and... 58 miles yesterday, so something like that. Um, but um, it gave, gave us a bit of time to think, or me a bit of time to think while I was on the bike. And um, yes, different bars again. <laughs> um, I must confess, um, the last 20 miles coming home yesterday, the old clip ones were, and the rear sets were starting to make me ache a little bit more. Um, and I think also, you know, you sat there and you're thinking about what you can do to the bike, you're staring at the, the same yoke some of the times for a while. Um, so it started getting the old brain whirring for a few little different ideas. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to go back with sort of flatter bars. I think I might put the mid sets back on. I'm going to do the bars first and then, uh, actually let's give you a little zoom round. Um, yeah, I'm going to do the bars first and then try them out again with the rear sets. Um, if that's not really comfortable, not really working, then um, I might go back to the sort of more mid, stock mid controls. Um, I've got quite long legs, so it is a little bit cramped up after a while. Um, but it's not just typical Johnny Cactus. I'm, I've had the same bars on for three minutes, time to change. It's, uh, I'm going to do a few other, other little bits and bobs, I think, to it. Um, mainly being, I'm thinking about doing something with a rear mudguard here. Um, I'm possibly, as I've been saying before, looking into maybe doing a bit of a side mount. So there's a few sort of plans of action uh, happening with that. Um, but in the meantime, I'm thinking not like the stock mud guard, which is quite quite huge. Uh, PJ, P, yeah, PJ glass fiber, which do a load of nice little bits and bobs for the bonnies. Um, he's just released a very a very bobbed slimline kind of uh, rear mud guard, which I just noticed this morning, and it's. Um, that's that's really nice. I really like it. It's fifty-seven quid, unpainted, um, which is you know it's not you know I don't begrudge paying that kind of money. I've had some of his stuff before and it is it's good quality. Um, simply, I haven't got that money at the moment. That's that's the trouble. I'm trying to save up for the project bike, whatever that may be. Um, so I've, I've, I've kind of got to do things in house and as, as cheaply as possible, really. And that's part of the fun. Um, so I'm thinking maybe. Um, of even um, either using the stock little bob front mud guard or the, the um, sorry the, the bob front mud guard or the stock mud guard maybe cut that down bolt it in um, I've got the the stock kind of rear guard and a load of fiberglass and stuff up there um, maybe make a mold or something and of, of that one or, or of the back one and um, have a bit of a play around and do something different and just have a little short kind of stub, stubby kind of mud guard. I think that'll be quite in keeping with the flat bars that go on um, and yeah I'm still going to revisit dropping these clocks and dropping this down a little bit just I just think it's going to look nice so um, yeah that's today's oh and possibly I um, mean you probably can't see here from my great big clunky feet again, I think I mentioned this before in the last video, the old shoelaces, trouser legs, everything um, is starting to wear away my paint here. So I might even do a, could do a plastic dip, looking at pennies um, yesterday, um, apart from the front end being covered in frost brown liquid wrap. <laughs> uh, um, oh, nah, in all serious, I love, love the finish they got on the side panels, I think they looked awesome. Um, but um, I'm going to try and maybe just tea cut this and just bring it back up to a shine again. It's only very light sort of swirl marks. Um, and um, But if I keep those, I'm going to have to have some kind of sacrificial wear point. So I might use up the rest of the kind of plastic dip. I prefer the look of the frost, seeing it on uh, Penny's bike, you know, the 
plastic dip on the front uh, sump guard and uh, and on the side panel the frosts actually looks a lot nicer I think and is cheaper of course as we know from Dell's vids so we'll see we'll see so I'm just here it's a wet horrible day and I'm having a play in the shed that's that's pretty much it today um, should be getting the stuff for the 12,000 mile service uh, well, what did I hit coming back from Swindon it's pretty well timed that I reckon as we arrived back from Swindon yesterday 11,930 so that's that pretty much brings me nicely up to um up to the 12k service point i did it a couple of 60 odd miles before 6000 last time anyway so um and i'll i'll, I'll probably film a bit of it it's going to be um just me monkey boying around um as i say uh i'm not professing to be uh, an expert or proficient in anything i'm literally i have checked the valve clearances on bikes before i'm kind of hoping they're all in tolerance um, this is a disclaimer. This is what I'm going to be doing to my own bike. Uh, you know, follow any practices I do or, or chirp in with anything that you think I'm being stupid with. But um, I'll just show you how I'm going to do it and how I've done it before. Um, as I say, it's I approach mechanics much the same way as gynaecology. It's, I'm not a professional. I just enjoy doing it. You know, it's uh, it's that sort of thing. But um, right, we'll crack on with a bit of bar action then. <coughs> Well, um, okay, uh, another quick thing I'm going to do, as I'm going to be messing around with the bars, normally I'd cover up the tank um, so I don't make any dents or bangs or whatnot. Um, but also, as I'm doing the service, and part of the service, well, obviously I'm going to be doing the valve clearances, but on the 12K, um, I'm going to be putting in a new fuel filter, which lives in the tank, and there's a new gasket there. Oh, and for anyone doing this, that's the Marl fuel filter, KL145. That is about 40 quid, it's about a tenner for that, 9.99. Um, it's the same fuel filter that Triumph used, but just a fraction of the price. Um, there you go, just a little uh, tip for you there. Um, but as the tank's coming off, and I've still got, we, we had to fill up on the way back yesterday, so I've still got a fair bit of fuel in here. So I shall be using my super duper pound shop siphoning system um, and for those of you yeah I know that's black for diesel but it's the biggest can I've got and it's only had unleaded in it so and I'll just show you how easy this is stick it in your tank give it a pump there we go and watch the fuel come out there we go super duper so it's making a bit of a mess because obviously the uh, the fuel filter and the gas um, are all in inside the tank on the EFI models so uh, you're going to get petrol anywhere. And for the first time, obviously, <laughs> I'm not smoking in the workshop. What a sensible man. Right, there we go. So that's most of the, pretty much most of the fuel drained out of the tank. Um, so I'll get ready to remove the tank. Um, you won't get every last drop out, but um, it's far better than when you... Well, I'll show you. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to do the fuel filter for you now, just because I haven't put an interesting video up for... Well, arguably, I've never put an interesting video up, but... Let's uh, let's do that now anyway whilst I'm taking the tank off and messing around because uh, I'm supposed to be going out to a bike meet tomorrow night um, <laughs> and my usual common sense way of doing things is look, I'm just going to just do all this crap rather than leave it for a day and um, probably end up not doing the bike meet but depends if the weather's like that. I don't know, don't know. But anyway, hopefully the rest of the service stuff should arrive tomorrow. Um, but let's get cracking now, a bit of preparation. Um, and so whip the seat off get the tank off and uh, of course prepare your area I've got a big old slab of foam I've had knocking around so I shall put that on the workbench and uh, one of our best bathroom towels because paintwork is more important than hygiene so there we go that's that's all there ready and uh, right time to whip the seat off tricky doing this one handed but uh, nice and easy on the seat on this one it's just the uh, two seat bolts you can get the thumb screw ones but um, can't be asked. and with the chop down seat it's not exactly difficult to get the access in here but, uh, 
those safely there. And I'll actually take this opportunity to show you. That's um, that's pretty much what I've got under my seat for uh, protection or lack of protection. Um, obviously with the mud guard eliminator I have a, a fair bit of gap here. You don't actually get a hell of a lot of spray up but um, part of me would like to you know if I am going to do this little mud guard have um, have something that's got a little a little bit more protection you know underneath the seat spraying up everywhere but um, yeah, it's not too bad but we shall see. Alright so it's just those two bolts breathe the hose off and uh, uncouple the fuel line easy peasy Eight mil bolts here, not insanely tight. And this is where it is. It's good to have a penny pit stop, Dell, because uh, this is really awkward doing this with just uh, one hand. I've been uh, invaluable. Oh, do you know what? I'm definitely gonna. I'm gonna put this down for. Well, let's. Uh, Let's navigate what we're going to do, and then um, I'll have to put the camera down for doing this. So underneath the tank, can you see? Don't know. Should turn the light on. There's the breather hose there, so that should. Now this one always seems to get really stuck on. So I'm just going to. It's only push fitted on. Just give it a bit of a yank out. Just hit me hand. Right, that's that bad boy off. And then I'll have to just lift the tank up. And then you, you will have seen on one of Dell's other videos um, a little clip. Um, uh, and then, but I'm going to need two hands for that. Okie dokie, so <coughs> turned it over now. Um, hardly any fuel left in it. So, this plate underneath here, and this is obviously an EFI model, fuel injected, you know. Um, you've got everything basically on this base plate underneath here. Um, so, I've just got to undo all these Allen bolts around here. Um, I have got a new gasket. I mean, I've, I've switched these over before, um, not on this bike, but um, on other bikes, and got away with not having to renew it. Um, I've had these for a while. I can't remember. I think I got some sort of deal on getting like a major service kit or something like that. So I got all these. So I might, I've got it. So I might as well change it. It's, it's you know, uh, it's been on there four years, so it might have perished a bit. Who knows? I'd rather not have fuel dumping out. So let's just change it. Um, what else was going to say? Oh yeah, the just jumping. I'm jumping back and forth a bit, but when I come to take the cover off, I did check the valve clearances on the six thousand mile uh, service just because uh, I had a bit of time to spare and I was a bit bored. So um, that's a relatively new gasket uh, on there, and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that I can get away with just taking this one off and reusing it, and I won't have any issues. Um, lots of people do get away with using them a couple of times. So, um, yeah, hopefully that should be all right. Um, so I have to buy a new one of those. But um, again, because I'm one-handed, I'll just put the camera down and um, whip these out and I'll show you what it all looks like inside. Right, so loads and loads of bolts off. Um, they're not torqued in very uh, tight. Um, and when re-putting them back in, you know, do a sort of crisscross pattern. Um, make sure it's all evenly going down um, and don't over-torque them. I'm going to double-check the what the torque settings are. Um, but taking them off, they are not on tight at all. You know, they're nipped up, but you don't have to lean on them. And uh, don't lean on them. Don't ask me how I know you shouldn't lean on them. Not on this tank, but um, the maid's tank. And uh, yeah, you don't want to lean on them, trust me. Okay, let's uh, try and maneuver out the film on the pump. It's going to be a bit more tricky with uh, one hand. Again. Right, okay, that was a little bit tricky because as you can see there's there's a lot of gumph that comes out of this. Um, so that is the that's what goes inside your tank. There you go, so you've got your little kind of pump and whoop, watch out for fuel spilling everywhere. And that's the bit we're gonna be changing there is you can see that's the triumph filter. So we're putting the mar one on. Um, so right gonna get this and I'm gonna to have to put the camera down just to sort all this out and um, then we'll change it. Right, okie dokie. So here we go, fuel on the bench. 
Um, all it is is just these hose clips. We'll just release those and um, a bit of wiggling, and we'll get the uh, fuel filter off. Uh, okay. And it's like little things like um, there's a, an arrow there of direction, um, so it's worth kind of just just remembering um, stuff like that. So you know, I'm looking at. I'll do it this way now, I'll look at it and go, right, the Triumph logo is upside down, the arrow's that way, so I'm kind of working upside down, so I'll remember it's that way for it to go. Um, so if I put the, that's the uh, new fuel filter, put that that one on the bench, I'll remember it's going that way. of petrol that's already in there. Oops. So another reason why I don't smoke. I oh, should do something like this. So I've got the old rags here. Just a nip up on this. So, in installation, as they say, is the reverse of removal. Pop the little cap off that bad boy. Just remember we're pointing down. Squeeze on there. Squeeze on there. Put our clips back in. There we go, easy peasy. Right. Right, time to put this back on. Interesting to note, the uh, new uh, rubber gasket is uh, slightly different to the old one, uh, which uh, has got two flanges, and that one's got three flanges. So um, I'm always up for a bit more flange. So they're both both same both ways, so um, there's no up or down. Double check, yep, all the holes line up. That's good. Um, camera down again. Let's try. I say it's, it's going to be a fiddly bugger, so it's probably going to be two, two hands to try and get this back in again. It's quite a, it's quite a big old unit, really. Uh, right, let's loosely get all the gap, the seal, and the bolts lined up. Okie 
deck to see here we go so make sure you've got it all orientated the same way I mean on this tank there is only really one way it can go in because all the pump and the everything are all they kind of go sit in this recess here so it's a bit a bit of a bit of a kerfuffle to get it all in so um, just replace all these uh, not replace sorry put re reinstall all these little allen bolts just making sure you've got them all in the gasket and uh, not cross threaded or anything so um, I'll just put them in loosely and then we'll crisscross them and uh, I've just checked the, uh, the book and it's 9 newton meters uh, each bolt tightened so it's not a lot of not a lot of weight on them bad boys at all so no need to overdo them right so now uh, they're all loosely in so now we're just going to torque them down crisscrossing I'm going to put the camera down for this um, and just make sure you just do opposite so it all goes down evenly so start with that bolt and then do that bolt you know and then do that bolt and then do that bolt and so on and so forth and it's a sort of star pattern and uh, that's it that's your fuel pump change so I'll just button those down might have a sandwich it's coming up to lunchtime and uh, hey and let's play around with the bars and possibly the foot rests Whee! I'll just show you how little you have to lean on them, just, there you go, that's nine, and just remember to do them opposite so it all tightens down evenly. Just using a bit of an extension bar on here so I don't twat the tank or anything like that. Cool beans, that's that. So. We're we'll going to have the aforementioned sandwich. Flip it over. Put your hand in. Any leakage? No leaking. That's what we like. Beautiful. Right, so that's the fuel filter done. Right, you join me back after I uh, went for a Cooperative tuna crunch, very very tasty that was. Washed down with a, a cherry coke there, lovely. And uh, so now uh, onto the bar time. Um, so to get the clip ons off, I'm gonna have to because um, <coughs> they clamp around the forks. You see, but they're one piece rather than two piece, so it's a bit more of a faff to get them off. So the top yoke's just got to come off, and then I can slacken the pinch bolts off once all the hardware's off, and just pop them out. So uh, first bolt to do is the uh, steering, steering stem nut, if you can say that. Um, and I've just put a bit of masking tape around there because uh, especially doing things one handed I don't want to be a bit cack handed and end up you know marking the top yoke. Um, so that's a 30 mil socket on the top. Get my bar and then I'll just uh, slacken that one off. Uh, God, this is difficult doing it one handed. Right. Try and do this one handed. Just <laughs> holding everything. There we go. Slacken that one off. That's alright, that's, I think that's about 90 Newton meters. I think they go at. Slacken the uh, pinch bolts in there, but I'm gonna gonna get rid of the old uh, the handlebar furniture first. And there we go. You join me back, and the bars are back on. Um, I had to do a little bit of faffing. I didn't bother recording it all because um, it was just stuff like um, where the clip-ons had been. I had to re-angle that and reroute that. I'd had it going a different way. Um, what else? The throttle cables just need some slight adjustment as well because they're moved. Um, different clutch cable on now because um, I had the one with the elbow when the uh, clip ons were on. So that's all back and changed and done. Um, so the old flat bars are back on there. And it 
yeah, it feels <laughs> very comfortable again, but uh, you know me, three minutes later I'll change my mind. But um, right, so that's done. Um, I also got a text message from DPD, and me service stuff will be arriving tomorrow. So that's pretty cool. So I've also started, as I'm faffing around in here for a few hours, um, might as well drain the oil. Uh, so the oil's draining away. Um, most of it's come out now, it's still a little drip. So um, that's ready for tomorrow. And I'll whip the spark plugs out next. And then um, take the uh, filter out. I've got. Um, in here, uh, it's slightly, it's not a stock filter, it's uh, I can't remember what I've got in here actually. Um, is it a KN or a Nexus or one of these sort of like you know, reusable performance ones or whatever the hell? Um, and what I've actually done, I'm just going to clean that out. I've got some uh, cleaning stuff I got with a filter. Um, it's got uh, oh god, it's dark in there. Hang on a sec, kids, let's get a torch. Yeah, because I've got a slightly different open uh, bell, bell mouth rather than like the snorkel intake on there. And you can just see the blue of the filter in there. Um, so I'll just give that a, a clean through. Um, and that can just go straight back in. Um, so I'll pop that out now as well. And uh, yeah, so let's, let's think. Spark plug's coming out. Do, 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 do yeah, air filter coming out. Um, I could take the rocker cover off the top, couldn't I? I suppose. I suppose. I might save that for tomorrow. Who knows? Who knows? I've achieved getting there today um, with bits and bobs. Um, right. I'm going to pause this and I'll decide what to do next. Right, so. Uh, let's see, we've got the air filters out, so I'll clean that up in a bit. Um, spark plugs are out. Tomorrow, I'll do the take the valve cover off tomorrow. Um, I'm just going to finish up today with taking off the rear sets. I've been sitting on the bike and just making vroom vroom noises, and um, I think moving the controls back there is going to be more comfortable with the setup as it is. So, I've got my box of stocker bits, um, so we're just going to remove those. Pretty simple, just undo the pinch bolt here, three bolts securing this bracket on here um, and the whole lot comes off and then um, yeah just stick a gear lever on and um, stick a foot peg back in place not much to it that's what we'll do now <laughs> remembered where everything went right then well that's pretty much it for today um, the uh, oil's pretty much drained out the spark plugs are out the air filter's out so I've just got to wait for the delivery now really so I can put the fresh oil in fresh plugs um, brake fluid I'm not going to bother with because I bled the brakes not too long ago um, 
I've changed the pads over, so that's that's still looking quite nice and ambery. So that 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 should be fine. Um, but yeah, so yeah, join me tomorrow, I guess. Really, um, bars are on, foot pegs are on. See how long I uh, stay with it like that. Um, I'll keep thinking about what I'm going to do for the rear mud guard. But um, yeah, sorry it's been a bit of a long-winded video this one. Um, but if you've not seen a fuel filter or what it looks like inside getting changed maybe that will be of some help to you um, and yeah I'll catch you tomorrow when uh, I'll finish this all off hopefully and I'll make the bike meet alright thanks Em see you next time